Well, good evening and welcome to this wonderful Wednesday of prayer time together. Thank you for tuning in and being a part of it. As you know, uh, many of us are gathered in room 413 for uh, in-person prayer time, and we will continue these online options for the next few weeks until we return back to uh, Wednesday night supper and our prayer meetings in the fellowship hall on August the 24th on a Wednesday night. So we'll continue these virtual ones for just a few more weeks, and then we'll just invite you back to come eat Wednesday night supper with us and then stay on for prayer meeting in the fellowship hall. But thank you for tuning in tonight as always. You can get the prayer list from Carolyn at montgomeryfpc.org slash prayer. Uh, you can put in your prayer needs there. You can put those in the chat section of how you're watching. And we would be delighted to pray right alongside you. Uh, and uh, looking forward to uh, just the opportunity to share what uh, we will be praying for in person along alongside one another. And uh, so join us uh, next week at 6 o'clock in room 413 for in-person prayer time. But tonight we want to go through our prayer list and uh, see what we have to be praying for. And thank you for being such a praying church uh, over the needs of our congregation and even the needs of our church. Thank you for praying for uh, Sunday morning and uh, the return. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. Let's start with our scripture memory, Romans 10, 9. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And so we continue reminding ourselves that Jesus is our Lord and our leader, that we allow him to lead and guide us, that we don't just say these words with our mouth, but that they are the desire of our heart, that we daily submit to the Lord's leadership in our life, that he is our Savior, he is our Lord, he is our everything. And so we continue to allow that to be not a one-time decision that we make, check the box and we're done for our lives, that we allow it to be a daily reminder, a daily trust in what the Lord has called us to um, so thank you for saying that and memorizing that with us. Now with that in mind, let's go through just a moment to say thank you to the Lord. Sunday was one of the more uh, special uh, worship experiences of my life. Uh, I wrote this in the beacon, but just uh, these past 10 months, even though we've walked through uh, you know, a, a difficult season here at our church, uh, just a, a kind of a disruption, um, much like a, a phone disrupts a prayer video right in the middle of this, but um, it's been more like a disruption than a disaster or a destruction. And um, through the midst of these 10 months, these disruptions, uh, I, I've experienced some of the more special worship experiences of my life. That first Sunday morning together uh, in the parking garage, and there was just something so sweet about being together after experiencing such an event in our church to to go over to the parking lot and we would just recognize how good it was in one service to be together uh, even though not ideal conditions but just to be together and eat beforehand or afterwards and have our bible fellowship in all these different places those were some super special moments of worship for us and then to move back into stakely and it was hard to be in three services and just kind of be a little bit fractured in that way but those were some deeply touching services three times in that space that has meant so much to many of us for many, many years to think of all that's happened in that room. So uh, over the course of these 10 months to experience worship in those different ways has just uh, illuminated my heart so, so much. And then to walk back in Sunday morning, I just, I praise the Lord for what we experienced. Not that we just experienced a building that's been refurbished, but that we experienced the Lord's presence amongst us. And so I, I just, I'm going to talk a bit about that Sunday morning as we worship together again, but it was a deeply touching time uh, to walk into the baptistry and um, the orchestra rears up and God's people reared up for worship. And it was extremely, extremely special. We had um, probably the largest amount of cards that I have ever received come through, uh, or at least since COVID, uh, not being Easter Sunday morning, it was just a massive stack of these little bitty cards come in, many of which were prayer, prayer needs, uh, just notes of encouragement and joy. Um, and so, you know, in the room together, we will be praying over these cards, praying over the needs that came in. And, and that's a joy-filled thing. We take these prayer needs and we, we just begin to pray over them together, individually and corporately. And so uh, it was a joy to receive those cards. Many folks wanting to come on as new members, folks wanting to recommit their life to Jesus, folks wanting to be baptized, and, uh, and just joy filling my heart. 
So we had seven baptisms Sunday. Thanks be to God. I mean, just incredible. Uh, six from youth camp and just the enjoyment and joy of seeing those kids, those students give their life to the Lord and rededicate their life, followed by our, our beforehand Charles Barley giving his life to the Lord. And as we were sitting back there talking, waiting to come down, he just said, baptism is like, I'm like giving my oath to the Lord. I, I'm giving my promise to the Lord that I am all in for him. And it was such a, a sweet word that well, Charles uh, just first baptism back in that place and my heart just felt like it was just about to come out of joy and so we praise the Lord for those wonderful baptisms right after that we, we celebrated at night uh, the youth camp review and all those incredible students our largest youth camp that I think we have ever taken they raised four thousand dollars for mission projects here at our church and um, they just had this incredible heartbeat to come back and worship and we got to enjoy those six uh, baptisms and over the past couple of weeks, we've had over 20 new members join our church. So many people coming and visiting and just checking things out and just feel the Lord beginning to work and just open the doors of great things ahead. So excited about what God's doing. Our amazing Cuba team, first time back in three years, and they came back and just had a very successful trip and look forward to extending our partnerships with the Cuban Baptist Association and the Cuban uh, churches there that we've been partnered with. And so look forward to more trips to Cuba. And then we praise the Lord for a great summer with our wonderful youth interns, children's interns, and pastoral intern. Thomas Treadwell was our pastoral intern, did a fantastic job. Uh, Caden and Asher, uh, Caden uh, Lockett and Asher King are children's interns that did marvelous. And then Lily Wyndham and um, Jake Rosdick, our youth interns, did a fantastic job. So we praise the Lord for a great crop of summer interns that did fantastic and just could not have done the work without them. So praise the Lord for uh, the good things that he has done. And I mean, I, I could probably spend the next 45 minutes, two hours, three hours, just telling you all the things that we are thankful for. I mean, just endless, endless list of great things that the Lord is doing around us. So let's just stop right now before we... Uh, share those needs that are around us and just thank the Lord. So Lord, we thank you. We thank you for those seven that plunged beneath the waters and were raised to walk in newness of life. Thank you for that orchestra leading us so well in worship and our choir and our congregation singing out in one accord our thanksgiving to you, to sing to God be the glory. And so we continue saying in everything that you do, to God be the glory. Great things you are continuing to do. Lord, would you continue to give us life and breath as we go forward. In your name we pray. Amen. If you have your prayer list, uh, you can uh, read that along with me, but I'll just kind of share what we have. Uh, we first want to just uh, lift up Carrie McMillan. Um, her husband Jim uh, passed away uh, very suddenly and unexpectedly and um, just praying so hard for Carrie uh, and the sudden loss and uh, just when we know arrangements, uh, we will certainly share those, but um, just uh, devastated to hear this news about Jim and praying for Carrie and her family and Jim's family as well, Lord. Uh, so praying for Carrie. Uh, also in the hospital, Mark Egerton, as you know, he took a fall last week and has been in very intensive care, uh, received some better news, but still uh, it's a very, very slow process for Mark. Um, but his family is very, very steadfast and uh, they, they shared the words that from Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and Daniel there that um, if uh, if the Lord delivers us from this fire, um, praise be to God. But even if he doesn't, we will continue to praise his name. And uh, they are trusting in the Lord for Mark's healing, and we are praying alongside them for uh, the recovery and the restoration of Mark. And also for Peggy McGalliard. Uh, Peggy is spending almost her fourth week there in Baptist East in the ICU. And uh, I talked to her son, Graham, uh, and th these days are very, very critical. She has taken several steps forward and then several steps backwards, but she is in some critical, critical days right in front of, uh, of her. And so pray hard for Peggy McGalliard and Graham and uh, her husband, Mike, and just that whole McGalliard family. They are walking through a lot right now, uh, trying to uh, just uh, pray and allow the Lord to just lead them in these difficult days. But um, uh, those are I have a smaller prayer list today. Thanks, the Lord. But as you look at the needs that have come through uh, from Sunday morning, there are a lot of needs within our faith family. A lot of people are struggling with cancer and with treatments and 
uh, recovery from illnesses and um, uh, procedures. And so continue to lift one another up. In your Sunday school classes, be involved and engaged. Uh, listen to one another and pray for one another often. This is a tailor-made time for inreach to our church members that may have been disengaged or disconnected through the disruption of the fire and the schedule changes and the classroom changes. So this is a perfect tailor-made time to pick up the phone and call somebody, write a note, and welcome someone back into the fellowship to, to bring them right alongside you. And uh, we're looking forward to the great things that are ahead. Um, we just uh, make a note that on August 14th, we go back to our two-service schedule at 8.30 and 11 o'clock with Bible Fellowship right in the middle. Um, and then uh, that day will be Promotion Sunday when our children and age-graded classes move to their next classes. If you're in fourth grade before, you're moving up to fifth grade, and uh, six goes into seventh, all that kind of stuff into the youth group. So that'll happen on August 14th, and as well as a start of discipleship classes on Sunday. That's youth choirs and um, adult discipleship, that's mission friends, RAs, GAs, all that starts back on Sunday, August 14th. And then on August the 24th, uh, that's not the following Wednesday, but the next Wednesday, August 24th, we will restart Wednesday night suppers in the fellowship hall. We'll have uh, children's choirs. Um, all, all that will start back on August 24th on that Wednesday night. And so uh, just keep those dates on your calendar. I cannot wait for Wednesday night supper, a highlight of the week to be able to just come together and share a meal and then have prayer time after that. Uh, Justin has some good classes available uh, as well as choirs and uh, all the like, powerhouse, all kicking right back into the school year on August 24th. So make, make plans to be a part of Wednesday night. Come on down and have supper with us and then pray with us and pray for one another. It's just deeply encouraging time on Wednesday nights, starting on the 24th in the Fellowship Hall. And then um, our deacon ordination will be on August 7th at 6.15. Uh, we're going to make our deacon ordination part of, it will be the evening service, so it, uh, excuse me, at 6 o'clock we will start our deacon ordination in, uh, in the main sanctuary. So uh, you will certainly want to be back to hear those testimonies and to just celebrate uh, what God is doing to bring us some such wonderful deacons to lead in serving our church. Let me pray for us, and then we will look forward to seeing you Sunday morning. Lord, thank you for this evening. I know everyone watching this, either live or uh, delayed, will certainly have things on their hearts and their shoulders that they are carrying, and pray your blessing on them. Thank you that you say, bring us all, bring all your cares and anxieties because you care for us. So. Lord, just pray your protection, your care, or excuse me, your, your, your leadership in our life, that you would lead and guide us by your steady hand, Lord. Pray your wisdom, that we desperately need your wisdom. No matter what we face, no matter what we're walking through, we desperately need your wisdom. So would you continue to guide us by your wisdom? Lord, we do pray for these friends who have um, walking through some valleys right now. We pray for Carrie. Lord, give her your comfort today, Lord. Pray for Graham and Peggy, McGalliard and Mike, and Lord, we pray for Mark Egerton and the Egerton family. Surround them there at the hospital with your presence. For those who are facing cancer battles, for Helen Ballard and um, just others who are undergoing treatments right now, Lord, we, we do pray that you would protect them, heal their body. Let these uh, medicines that uh, they're taking be effective in their bodies and that their bodies would strengthen and heal in the days ahead. Lord, we love you, and thank you for Jesus. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful night, and we look forward to seeing you Sunday at 1015 for worship, 9 o'clock for Bible Fellowship. If you do not have a Bible Fellowship class, come on in the main sanctuary at 9 o'clock, and my pastor's class will meet right in those back pews. We'd love to see you there. God bless you. Good night.